So I just got the rims back from the polish shop and have to say that Rob and the gang at Just Shine It in Edmonton did a fantastic job. They had to acid wash them because they were just so rotten. Uh, they you know, had grease on them, pitting, and uh, they started with 80 grit sandpaper and worked their way up. So, I mean, she's still a little pitted showing her age, but you know, from a distance that they're gonna look like new. And uh, yeah, you can even see the old Alcoa. There's a the date, 1989. So these wheels are pretty vintage. But yeah, let's get them mounted on the truck. I think they're gonna look great. All right, there we go. Last one. There, she's all torqued and looking pretty good. That's a lot of work. Still huffing. There you go. Some new old shoes. Looking pretty sharp though. So now that I got that going, I'm gonna continue on the airlines and try and get that going so we can add some air. Uh, I did get a few aluminum tanks off a newer Peterbilt that I'm just getting polished. So I'm gonna get those mounted on the frame rail and just continue uh, swapping airlines. So a little bit. All right, so the, the next stage is getting uh, fuel tanks and new ones are pretty pricey. So I actually found some used ones off uh, 2018. Now they say 150 gallon, but according to the measurements, it's about a 135. So that's how she looks mocked up. Just gonna get it polished. I'll take it to uh, the same guys that did these awesome, awesome wheels that just shine it in Edmonton and get the tanks polished up. Uh, they're currently polishing my aluminum air tanks that I'm gonna mount on the frame hopefully this weekend. And uh, yeah, so I was looking at, I was hoping to be able to reuse the old bands, but uh, taking a look at them further, where they're pinned in the back, they're pretty cracked. So if I get these tanks looking all shiny, I don't think I really wanna put old bands on it. So I guess that's just another thing to buy. Get some nice uh, stainless ones, big wide bands off the new trucks and put those on there. But yeah, here she comes. I mean, it's uh, it's quite a project, but uh, it's gonna look good as we keep moving forward. But yeah, getting the tanks on, getting the air tanks on, uh, hooking up the fuel lines, finishing off all the air lines on the back, and doing something with the exhaust, and I can probably drive it around. All right, another Saturday morning. I think winter's here for real this time, so I'm gonna have to get used to it. I'll have to sweep the snow off and and get rolling here, but I got an early start. I'm gonna try and tackle these uh, these mounts, get those put in, jack the cab up. I wanna get prepared for uh, hopefully putting the sleeper on. It would sure be nice to get the sleeper on, sealed up, and then I could throw a heater in there, and then I can, uh, can work on all the wiring in the interior. So, let's get started. So this bolt does not wanna come out of here. Been uh, hacking away on it. Of course, the uh, shifters, shifter linkage is right in the way, so I gotta use a little ratchet and I got a wrench underneath. But I got a uh, nice post here and the jack to lift up the, uh, lift up the cab, which is actually working quite well. Some of the slack there. You can just tell these, uh, these mounts are just shot. I bet you if I drove it like this, the cab would just be uh, shaking and jiggling going down the road. So keep working away here get that bolt out and get those new mounts in. All right, so I finally got them out of there. Here's the old squished one. And you can see that the new one is, uh, is thicker and obviously much better. So yeah, pretty easy, just plop it in there. And uh, just do the reverse. There's a little uh, spacer there. And then I'm just gonna put it right, down, right on back. That's one down and then there's uh, one on each corner in the front. Okay, so I got the back one done. Now I'm working on the front. And uh, it's starting to warm up now, which is kind of a pain because everything's turning to mud. And of course, water's dripping on my head. I almost wish it would stay below zero. But yeah, so I'm trying to get this guy out. I got the nut out, but this is a little different. So there looks like there's a, another plate that I've taken the nuts off, but I'm still trying to, to hammer this guy out of here. And it's uh, giving me a hell of a time. So I'm going to keep working at it. It, uh, it'll come out eventually, I'm 
All right, so I got the new mounts in there. I'll just let the cab down. Done. Put the nut on and call her a day, at least on this project. All right, so one thing about this truck you've seen from previous videos is it starts really well, but something I, I've mentioned in earlier videos, but I've never actually demonstrated is it doesn't turn off. So I've been trying to do some troubleshooting on that. Uh, being an old mechanical cat, it doesn't have any electronics. So the only electronics is the shut off solenoid. So I actually found uh, down by the injection pump, uh, the shut off solenoid. So I pulled this out. It's actually got a fuel line that goes through it and then into the injection pump. And uh, so I took it off, put it, played with it on the bench and I hooked up uh, 12 volts and the solenoid does click. But I think what's happening here is either the return spring is not strong enough or it's actually just worn a little ring in there and it's actually not sealing against the uh, the port there and it's allowing diesel to leak by and the truck continues to run so i took this into traction and they do have a replacement for it but uh, this particular model is actually for air it's not actually designed for fuel so someone customized this along the way and put this guy in here so that might be part of the problem so I'm trying to source a similar unit that actually is certified for diesel fuel and then I'll put that in there. And then hopefully when it kills power, the plunger will go forward, shut off the flow of fuel and shut off the truck. So that's uh, just another thing that I'm working on, but it'll be uh, a lot nicer than having to put it in gear and, uh, and stall it out to, uh, to turn off the engine. So I was actually uh, at a local uh, custom parts store and I found this nice elbow uh, which bends out the shifter, which I kind of like. So I actually, I accidentally, when I took this, uh, when they took this off, I dropped it and I broke this old classic uh, shift lever. So I might just get a straight one, but I, I glued it together for now and I put the elbow bend on there, which is just, it's really nice for the, uh, for the shifting over top of of the other shifter so that's kind of the the setup i'm going to go with but i'm really looking forward to uh to driving this thing now you'll see the uh i did put some bars of soap in here uh, a friend of mine was telling me that mice hate irish spring so i've had so many mice in here i've put uh bars of irish spring soap throughout it kind of gives it a nice smell and uh hopefully we keep the mice out uh what else um uh, been working on the windshield wipers I think I'm actually going to go with the cheaper alternative I was going to go with the whole electronic uh, conversion kit from Dirks but uh, what I actually ordered on Friday was uh, was new windshield wiper controls because if you remember in an earlier video they were leaking and bypassing so I've ordered brand new replacements so I'll put those in there and we'll do kind of the old school <clears throat> windshield wipers uh, hopefully that uh, hopefully that works okay and yeah moving along so I've also been trying to get some work done on the airlines and I've been picking away at this so last weekend when I replaced this line uh, the one that was original I backed it out of here out of the relay valve and of course it just steel and aluminum don't play nice together and it sheared off so I figured rather than trying to dig it out and muck up the old threads, just get a new relay valve. It probably needs it anyway. So this one actually matches the same one that's underneath the frame. So just continuing to work at it. I'm trying to keep them connected as reminders of where they're where they came from and just replace those lines one at a time. I also got a new leveling valve. So you can see that there. Uh, so I'll swap that out with this guy. For those who don't know, uh, when it's aired up, um, so when it's down like this, this actually connects here. And so this opens the valve and allows air to flow into the airbags. The truck rises up and then as it rises up, this guy will eventually come straight and close off the air to the airbags. And then as you load up your fifth wheel and you got your trailer on there, it uh, squishes the airbags down and it allows this to to give it a little more air and then it just kind of keeps it all level. When I had this, uh, when I was replacing, playing around with the connectors last weekend, there's a lot of oil in here. 
Um, there was a leak on the compressor and there's oil just about everywhere. I guess it keeps my steel tanks from rusting. But I uh, figured I'd just put a new leveling valve on. Uh, I want to make sure that it uh, that it's done right. Uh, shocks are pretty old. Probably get some new shocks put on, but kind of keep picking at the air lines. I mean, as you can see, it's just a, a rat's nest of lines. So what I'll do is kind of one by one, just disconnect it where it's underneath the truck, or underneath the cab, uh, pull it all the way back, cut it to length, put new connectors on, and then run it back through the frame. So just do these kind of one by one. Um, I did get a note from Rob at uh, Just Shine It. He said my air tanks are all polished, so I'll go pick those up this week and mount those. And what else? I did, uh, I took a closer look at the fuel tank, the used fuel tank I bought. And I don't know, it's it's not really kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, well, show you the mounts there. Got those in, all finished. But yeah, I guess I didn't do a close enough inspection of this at the wrecker. Uh, the front of the tank is pretty rock chipped and dented up. And then I noticed when it was standing up, you can kind of see it there, it's dented in. So this isn't this isn't quite the tank I thought it was. And I don't know if it's worth investing in polishing it. Just to have all those dents in there. So I think I'll probably take it back. And he's actually got new tanks. And I'll probably end up going going new. I'm putting a lot into this truck now. No point putting old dented tanks on it. Um, and that's pretty much it for the update. So just keep picking away at it. The uh, I almost wish it would have stayed cold because now it all turned to mud. But can't complain too much. At least it's not that cold. So there's your update, little by little.